the future of Article 9 since the um, assassination of uh, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. And um, uh, I'd just like to comment a little bit about that. Um, as, uh, the film, as the film made, uh, Abe was on a mission when he was prime minister and after uh, to restore the Japanese military to the quote unquote glory they uh, experienced before World War II. And, uh, and also to clear his grandfather's name. His grandfather was a class A war criminal in World War II. Uh, who was not arrested and not uh, uh, sentenced in any way about his uh, criminal activity. Uh, he also, Abe also wanted Japan to be a major player on the world stage equal to the United States. Uh, and using Article 96 of the Japanese Constitution, uh, which enabled him to reinterpret the Constitution, reinterpret Article 9 to serve his purposes. And he began doing that. Uh, and, by, and, and he was able uh, to reinterpret Article 9 by uh, building up the home security force, not only as a defense uh, force, but also as a, a force for future combat in support of his alliance, the Japanese alliance with America, so that if the USA went to war, Japan as it would be a partner, and they would go into combat with the U.S. If Japan was attacked, uh, the, Amer Amer the United States would, as a partner, uh, help defend Japan against attack. That never happened, but uh, that's the direction he was moving into, and he was gaining support for that idea uh, until his assassination. Uh, and then even after the assassination, uh, right-wing forces in Japan, in particular, there was one religious cult uh, who wanted to continue that mission and to uh, actually abolish Article 9 and, uh, and make it, make it uh, a possibility for Japan to uh, become a partner with the U.S. in combat missions if it was necessary. Uh, that's pretty much what, what uh, he was trying to achieve at that time before he was assassinated. There's a lot more, but I won't go into that. Uh, uh, people might have questions and I'll try to answer some questions. Hi, um, David, thank you for all of that. And I want to say, much to my shame and total amazement <clears throat> after being in the peace movement for as many years as I have, I never heard of Article 9. <laughs> How the heck? And I mean, I've done Hiroshima and the girl, but I've done these forever. I, I don't know how that got past me, but um, I thank you for putting this together. I thank you for all the work that you've done. And I just want to say that um, I have been quite upset. <clears throat> I've put out today to all of my list the, the lack of both the sixth and today in our social, in our media, which <clears throat> I'm not as surprised of as I am just in general, not out on social media, not all, all over on lists. War is horrible. We've done a lot of horrible things since we first came in and wiped out all the indigenous people. But dropping that bomb, the first one, and seeing what it did to all human life, and then turning around and three days later, dropping another one. The inhumanity of that one act. I, I don't know how we have ever been able to be taken seriously by anybody since then. I, I, it's just horrific. And I will now shut up because I am, could go on around this. But thank you, David. Thank you. Well, well, well thank you for your, your comments. Um, actually, I didn't know about Article 9 myself until 
I was teaching in a Japanese school in Boston. And uh, I happened to be in the library one day reading uh, a newspaper. And there was a, a little article in the newspaper about the Japanese constitution as a peace constitution. And I was already a peace activist, so I was immediately uh, interested. So I, I began reading more and more and then told me all about, uh, uh, it opened up uh, the idea that Japan had a peace constitution for more than 60 years. And uh, so I began doing research and looking deeper into it. And then I, I, I little by little began to learn about Article 9. Um, but the bombing of, uh, but the um, uh, one point I'd like to make is that uh, the whole Manhattan Project was a, was a secret, uh, supposedly a secret uh, uh, that the American people knew nothing about. Uh, the scientists knew what was going on, and uh, their international scientists knew what was going on. Russia knew what was happening, and uh, uh, but uh, once the bomb was dropped, they claimed it was done uh, to save lives in the Far East, that we wouldn't have to attack Japan, we would not lose American troops in an invasion, this bomb was saving lives, never talking about the lives they sacrificed to save lives. And the scientists and engineers who designed and built the bomb uh, were never held accountable. Uh, it was not considered a crime what they had done. Uh, no, they were hailed as heroes. And over the never over the years were they ever held accountable. They were always, uh, 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 you know, applauded as being heroes of World War II. So they saved the world from uh, fascism and, uh, and 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 so forth, and then saved democracy, so so to speak. It was all considered a big experiment. You know, the bomb was originally intended for Germany. Uh, that because Germany, they got uh, through um, Albert Einstein, uh, they got uh, information that Germany was working on a development of a, a nuclear weapon. And so, uh, and then through diplomatic uh, channels and political processes, uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt finally put, gave the uh, green light uh, for the Manhattan Project uh, to, to counter what Germany was supposedly doing. But Germany wasn't even close to building a nuclear weapon. They were talking about it and doing uh, some uh, research on it, but never close to doing it. Um, and so uh, then uh, Germany uh, uh, surrendered. And the uh, powers that be uh, said, well, we can't tell the American people that this cost us $2 billion, you know, we can't tell them that. We've got to do something with that 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 bomb. So, well, let's drop it on Japan. I mean, after all, they're going to they were going to um, surrender anyway. They had already sent out to the Vatican of all places uh, to monitor a peace between America and Japan, and uh, it was all turned down by Washington. And so they said, "Well, we've got to do what we have." and you know, see what we get. And so they dropped the bombs. And they also, they used the bomb to intimidate Russia too, that the, the Soviets uh, were, it's supposed to be a, a surprise to the Soviets and they would then uh, pull back and not try to, to, to compete with us uh, uh, in a nuclear age. Of course, that was never worked out, but that was one of the rationales for using the bomb. You might be able to say a little bit about um, a section on Japanese politicians, uh, thoughts yeah. about the future of Article 9, and then um, wrap up with the assessment of the role scientists and engineers play in the design yeah. and use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Uh, there uh, were voices of politicians, uh, most recent too, the recent voices of politicians uh, and their opinion about 
uh, what should happen with Article 9 after the assassination of Abe. And uh, for example, the uh, Kazuo Aichi, who was uh, a longtime leader of the Liberal Democratic Party's deliberations on constitutional revision. Constitutional revision was in the foremost of uh, Japanese politicians for a long, long time. It wasn't, it didn't just, uh, uh, you know, emerge after the assassination of Abe. They were thinking about it all along. Anyway, uh, he said, uh, Kazuo Aichi said, I would have to say that Article 9 or ultimately be revised. However, I would also argue that it might be wiser for us to shelve this effort and maintain Article 9 as is for now. Uh, another voice of, from the uh, political arena, Hajime Funada. Uh, he had served 11 terms in the lower house of the Diet starting in 1979 representing the first district constituency of the uh, Tochigi prefecture. And he says, with regards to what a revised constitution might say, a new Article 9 must be acknowledged. We must acknowledge it as at our self-defense force, as part of our self-defense force. But it is extremely important that we do not rush. We must take our time and make steady progress by following the established procedures. So the politicians uh, were cognizant of what, need, what they felt needed to be done, but also be, it should be not too rushed. Uh, then there was the, um, uh, the uh, polling, uh, Article 9 media, media polling. Uh, and, and the different newspapers, the uh, Asahi Shimbun, uh, their readers are typically cautious on constitutional revision, but their opposition has weakened over the past two years. In May 2020, the gap between those who opposed and those who favored revision shrank to 3%, with 46% opposed to revision and 43% in favor of it. The Yomiuri Shimbun, another newspaper, uh, it favors revision of the Constitution, having offered its own revision proposals in 1994, 2000, and 2004. People who agree make up slightly more of Yomiuri's readers than those who don't agree. Uh, that was according to a May 2020 poll. The Nikkei Shimbun, the polls by Nikkei Shimbun, Japan's business duly, uh, daily, like uh, the Wall Street Journal, show that its readers have wavered in their support for revision. Although over 60% supported revision in 2000, only 41% did so in 2018. Longer term trends suggest that the Japanese people are in no hurry to revise their constitution. There's an important Buddhist voice uh, Kome Ito is a conservative political party in Japan founded by lay members of the Buddhist Japanese new religious movement, Soka Gakkai. And this was founded in 1964. Since 2012, it has served in government as the junior coalition partner of the Liberal Democratic Party. That was uh, Shinzo Abe's party. They worked as a, in partnership. And uh, they were, Komohito, the uh, Buddhist group, was trying to strike a balance between right, right wing militarism and proponents of, of Article 9. The ruling Liberal Democratic Party and its coalition partner, Komohito, have won at least 63 seats in the July 10th House of Councillors election. That means over half the seats that were being contested. And they are the, uh, uh, the, the party in power now and have been all through the uh, Shinzo Abe's uh, administration. Um, in my own voice, I give my little opinion here uh, that uh, Professor Takashima Nobuyoshi, a historian and professor emeritus at the University of Ryuku on Okinawa, he said that 
Japan was forced to accept democracy because of its defeat in World War II. Basic human rights were not gained through the sweat and blood of the people. Apparently, in my reading, uh, Nobuyushi views real democracy as one that must be won through violent revolution or it is not a valid democracy. He claims that Japan was forced to accept democracy because of its defeat, and yet there's no evidence that the Japanese people were filling the streets, clamoring for a homegrown return to the fascist regime of World War II. Uh, Japan's building of her security forces is a premeditated act of psychological terrorism, equal on the world stage to the nine most powerful nations uh, who comprise the nuclear club uh, led by the United States and Russia. And they continue, the nuclear, US and Russia, continue to play nuclear roulette with more than 120 peace-loving nations all signatories to the NPT, Non-Proliferation Treaty. Only the US, Russia, and the nine members of the club, nuclear club, have not signed that treaty. It must be stated and restated that one reason Article 9 has prevented Japan from making war is that her scientists and engineers are prevented from making nuclear weapons. Uh, William Harting, Hartung, director of the Arms and Security Project in Washington, acknowledged that scientists and engineers are the only people capable of designing and making weapons of mass destruction. They are the source of a potential nuclear Armageddon. Now, I earned a graduate degree in science. I'm a strong supporter of science. Uh, I believe, though, that it is important that weapon Weapons making scientists and engineers be held accountable for crimes against humanity. Uh, you may recall that the scientists and engineers working at Los Alamos and the atomic bomb were celebrated heroes, as I, I mentioned earlier. The same corporations and employees that manufacture weapons of mass destruction produce the assault weapons that are used to murder our collective children on a daily basis here in America. A uh, nuclear holocaust or mass murder of our children, it is at the source where it must be stopped, in my opinion. But uh, thank you so much for having me and for showing the film. I appreciate it greatly. Thank you.